Hello, my lovely bookish friends. How are we doing today? It is Heather with Bell's Library back to finish up our Libra experiment. If you guys are new here, definitely get down below and subscribe. And also, you're going to have to go back and check out my TBR video for this. That kind of leads into today's video. started this kind of Libra experiment challenge last month. I was planning on reading all of these books last month and then my TBR changed a little bit because of the Black Lives Matter movement and I decided to pick up a couple of Angie Thomas's books. Also we had Romance-a-thon and I was trying to fit that in there too. So I am a little late with updating on this one because I had to finish a couple of the books this month. But we are going to go ahead and get into this. So if you have not seen the TBR video, I will have it linked up in the cards as well as down below in the description. But basically, I looked at a bunch of websites that had recommended books for Libras, which I'm a Libra, if you haven't figured that out. And I decided to read some of them and see if they got it right. If a Libra like me does actually enjoy these books. I did get somewhat of this idea from Kayla over on Books and Lala. She did this for reading like a Aries. So I will link her channel down below as well as her video if you guys want to go check hers out. She did it a little bit different, but same kind of idea. So we're going to go ahead and get into the books that I read for this and see if I like them. One of the first books that I read for this challenge was Queenie and this one I gave a three star. So kind of middle of the road there. So I'm basically going to give you like a brief reason why it said that I would like this, but there's a lot more detail in the other video and then I'll just tell you kind of my feelings and what the book's about and kind of a little bit more of a wrap up kind of style. The website basically said that this book is very smart, funny, and socially minded, similar to a Libra. And so that would be why I would like it. This book I didn't dislike, but I just didn't really super like it either. It was kind of just middle of the road for me. I appreciated some of the talk about Black Lives Matter throughout this book and how it was just kind of woven in. It wasn't like super in your face, but you were just like, oh yeah, okay. Um, I appreciate that some of these feelings are coming up and I can understand some of the woven in racism that just happens in our society these days and how to kind of avoid those situations and be more of an ally myself than um, I'm realizing that I'm, I'm doing things that maybe are offensive to someone of color. This book was definitely very Bridget Jonesy. So the basic premise is we have Queenie and she ends up really struggling after her boyfriend breaks up with her and her job starts to tank and everything just seems to be falling apart and she just needs to try to pick up the pieces. I don't want to give away too much, but I definitely felt like for me, it was just a little bit too negative in a lot of ways. Like I have a hard time sometimes when my books just aren't super uplifting. I like more happy type books. If I'm going to read like a contemporary like this, I want it to, to make me happy. And uh, I have a harder time with things that are just a little bit more depressing feeling. Um, unfortunately, Queenie is just, she struggles a lot. She ends up, you know, really needing to take some self care and she, you know, lets men use her and it's just a rough road for her. I definitely appreciated the way the author kind of ended things and the way she had Queenie address getting some help and um, her struggles with that and her Jamaican culture because they don't believe in getting help outside of the family and that kind of thing. So that was definitely well written. 
I also think towards the end there was like a really good message in like standing up for yourself and not letting other people just control what you're doing in your life. And so I appreciated some of the things this book was doing. Just enjoyment wise, it was a little sad for me. Okay, so the next book we're going to talk about is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. I actually listened to this one on audiobook and ended up buying the book afterwards because I really, really enjoyed it. And I gave this one five stars. And um, I also just thought the cover looked really gorgeous. So I'm really excited because I think in September, Blood and Honey is coming out, which is the next book in this series. So this one is about... I'm blanking on names, of course. Okay, so this is about Lou and Reed. Lou is a witch and she is very snarky and quick-witted and stubborn. And we have Reed and he is a chasseur, which is basically a witch hunter. And he is also extremely stubborn, but he has like a really warm, sweet heart. And both of them obviously dislike each other because they're hunting each other and they end up being forcibly having to get married. So very interesting. Um, Lou obviously knows that he is a show sir, but Reed does not know that Lou is a witch during this story. And so they are both having to kind of come overcome some struggles with their opinion of each other before they've even really gotten to know each other. So I really enjoyed that kind of gray area where it's like, why do we have to hate witches and hunt them down? And why do we have to hate the Chaucers? They're still people too. And I, I love a hate to love romance. So obviously we have a little bit of that going on in this book. Uh, this book just had so many things that I personally enjoy. I love hate to love. I love witches and magic and that kind of fantasy setting. Um, there was, you know, a little bit of romance, a little bit of action, and just combining both those things into a fantasy book. Like, all of that just wraps up into a big, beautiful book that I definitely love. Um, I totally forgot to tell you guys what <laughs> was said about why I would like this book, too. Obviously, we hit it on the head with this one. That would be because the website actually didn't say why I would like it. They just said that I would. So, Thumbs up. I did like it. So we are kind of going to go the opposite direction now. We're going to talk about the 57 bus, which I actually DNFs. So I may go back and actually finish this one. I was listening to it on audio. It's not a super long audio book. I just, I made it a couple hours in and then I just never wanted to go back to it. And I was just struggling and by like the time my audio book was like, oh, we're going to return you. I was just like, I just want to read other things. I don't want to go back to this book. And I think it's that same idea. It was just such a heavy topic and I didn't want to read about a heavy topic, topic. especially like when I actually had this audiobook going. Um, everything was happening with the Black Lives Matter movement. There's a lot of things going on obviously in our world with the pandemic going on and there's just so many heavy things going on in the world. I didn't want to also read a heavy book and I was already reading some books that kind of talked about this. So I just wasn't in the mental space to finish this one. So I DNF'd it. Um, but this one is actually based on a true story. So it's not super fictional. Um, and it's just talking about the two sides of like this hate crime that happens. And you can... I don't know. I'm a person that I can see both sides of things. And so it was really hard because I could feel for this black kid who was stupid and set this girl on fire or not girl, but this person on fire. And it looked like a hate crime because this, it was someone who doesn't define themselves as woman or male and so was wearing a skirt but technically to us in society we would see that person as a male and it just so that was really confusing and then obviously there's a lot of hurt feelings with I can't remember names I'm terrible with names but being set on fire and having yourself burned like that is not okay at all either 
And so you're just seeing like two sides that just were in an awful situation and everything's just not okay there and nothing's right with society and the way that these things were handled and it just was it was a little heavy so the main reason this was recommended to me as a libra is mainly from the kind of justice side of things uh, libras we have the scales as like our symbol and we like to see things balanced and so, I mean, I guess that kind of relates into justice a lot of the times. I don't know that I fully connect with this piece of the pie. I definitely balance, I like balance 100%, but I also we talked about in the other video, Libras don't like controversy and there's a lot of controversy going on in this book. So that was just, that was a lot for me. So I did DNF this one. Moving on, next up, we're gonna talk about Labyrinth Lost by why am I spacing Zoreta Cordova? She is definitely becoming an author I'm really enjoying. I just finished Incendiary by her and it was so good. But anyways, back to on topic for Labyrinth Lost. I gave this one four stars. I definitely really enjoyed this one. It is kind of a quest type fantasy where this Bruja uh, ends up accidentally sending her family into this other land and the devourer has them and she has to try and go get them back and so she's meeting different creatures and having different obstacles along the way i appreciated that it really moved the story along because we were having multiple battles along the way we were meeting different creatures and people and uh i also met rishi which oh my gosh i loved her she was so cute uh she was just such a positive light and she is our main character's best friend and she just trudges through, man. She's always just like, yeah, we got this. She, I don't know, just a big ball of positiveness and I just loved it. Uh, I, I just, yeah, I enjoy being around positive people. I enjoy trying to be positive myself. I always try to find the good in everything and every situation. And so I just adored her. There also was a very large extended family in this one, so I really enjoyed the kind of family bonding feeling going on. I absolutely love my family, and I think family is so important, and so that was really, you know, a sweet, important part to me for this book. And like Serpent and Dove, this style book's just right up my alley. It had a little bit of romance, it had a lot of action, and it was about witches and magic, and so, you know, things can't go super wrong on that. So I enjoyed this one. It was a four star. Totally forgot to say that the main reason that Libras are supposed to like this is because Alex is trying to reclaim herself and not do things that everybody else would super like her to do, and... Libras are the opposite of that. We like to make people happy and do things to make them happy. Uh, so for some reason, they figured Libras would like that. I did, so I guess it worked out. The next book is another one that was recommended but didn't really give a reason. It just kind of said, we think Libras would like this one. And that was We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. I did definitely like this one. I gave it four stars. It really packed a punch for how small of a book it was. It was only in like the 200 page range, I believe. Um, and it was about, it wasn't like a super light topic, but at the same time, like you still had a really sweet friendship and bonding between these two girls and a found family that just took in our main character and loved her, even though she wasn't really wanting that. Um, it was just, yeah, it was really sweet. And it talks a lot about grief and the things that you learn after somebody passes that they never tell you, that they've just kind of got closed away in their room or wherever they are kind of keeping things to themselves. And in some ways, you're not going to always know somebody 100% completely. Sorry if you hear my daughter a little bit in the background. 
She's making some noise over there. I also really enjoyed that there was actually two timelines in this book. So one of them was in the present day after uh, our main character's grandfather has passed and her friend, she pretty much blew off her friend and didn't talk to her for like months after this happened. Comes out for Christmas to visit her at the college that she moved away to and then we also are following the events of the summer leading up and the year, like kind of, I guess the six months before her grandfather passed and what's going on there and their relationship before he passes. And so, yeah, it was just, it was a really sweet story and I, I definitely enjoyed this one. I ended up actually picking up another Nina LaCour book that I'm excited to get to because I really enjoyed her writing. So next up we will talk about Five Feet Apart by Rachel Lippincott with Mickey Daughtry and Tobias Lacunas. Nope, Ian Conus. I don't know why I always get that one wrong. Anyways, uh, I actually just finished this book a few days ago and this was the last book that I had to wrap up and I just seriously love the cover art on this book. It is gorgeous. This is probably like one of my absolute favorite cover arts ever. It is so cute. And this actually means something to the story. So this book wasn't a super long book either. I was able to get through this one in a couple of days and I rated this one a four star. So this one was recommended because Will and Stella, our main two characters, are trying to find some balance in their life. And as a Libra, we just love balance in everyday life and everything. We're just very balancing people. Things are off kilter and it drives us crazy. This one does have a dual perspective. We are following Will and Stella and both of them have cystic fibrosis. And when two people have cystic fibrosis, they are actually supposed to stay six feet apart because they don't want to infect the other person with any bacteria or anything. It can be very dangerous for them to be near each other and Will also contracted the cepatia, which is a bacteria and he can no longer get a lung transplant because of this bacteria infection that he has and it is incurable. And if Stella were to get it, she would not be able to get new lungs ever as well. And it also shortens their lifespan quite a bit, which if you don't know anything about cystic fibrosis, you're already looking at a lot shorter of a lifespan in general. Um, some don't make it through teenage years, but most don't make it past maybe their 30s, from my understanding. So this is their story and they meet when they both are in the hospital at the same time and they end up falling in love and it is just a really sweet story about how two people that still have to stay six feet apart can truly love and care for one another, how they can connect in other ways, but also about how important touch can be. Uh, so just how important touch can be to a relationship and you know, you don't really fully think about it sometimes, but sometimes you just want to hug someone who's having a hard time or just, just a simple hand on the shoulder or something. And they couldn't do that. So it was a really cute story. I definitely recommend four stars for me. So the last book that I am going to include is going to be Starry Eyes. And this one's a Jen Bennett book. I gave this one four stars as well. So quite a few four stars out of this little experiment I got going on. Spacing out. Okay. This one was recommended because they have a partnership here and they kind of complement each other and make each other better in this story. And that's something that Libras supposedly really like. They like to have a partner and someone who compliments them and makes them better. And basically we don't like to be alone. We like to have a partner that, you know, is there to help us and guide us. And I definitely have that with my husband, so I can appreciate that. Um, I really enjoyed this book though. The characters super sweet. We have Lennon who I connected with when he was talking about like camping and being outdoors and how you can just like unplug and 
just be. And I also really enjoy Zori. Like from the first chapter, she was talking about like how she plans everything and super like control freakish. And I can definitely relate to the whole planning aspect. I plan every week, like constantly. Um, so everything that I'm doing, <laughs> I have habit trackers, I have all of that kind of stuff going on. So I definitely could relate to both of these characters. And this one takes place on a camping slash hiking trip. And we have kind of a second chance romance going on, which is one of my favorite tropes. And also a little bit of kind of hate to love. It's kind of like love to hate to love. Uh, but I definitely wanted to be outside camping and hiking and just be in this book. And I think that says something about a book. So. If you want to hear more thoughts on this one, I did read this one for Romancethon, so I'll put that up in the cards and down below as well. And you guys can check that out and a few of the other books I read for Romancethon. And then I also was planning on reading When the Moon Was Ours, but I couldn't get my hands on a copy. Unfortunately, the libraries are closed right now in my area, and I couldn't get it any in any way online. It just I was struggling to find this book. So I really still want to read it because it does sound very interesting, but I didn't get to finish off that book for this little experiment we got going on. So just to review kind of the ratings that we had going on, we had seven books in total. One of them was a five star, four of them were four stars, one of them was a three star, and one of them was a DNF. So most of them were, you know, in the good rankings area. So definitely is uh, something to look into. If you guys need some book recommendations, you might check out books for your sign. Or if you are a Libra, then you know, maybe a few of these books would interest you as well. You might check them out. I definitely had a really fun time doing this little experiment. And I hope you guys enjoyed too. Uh, I will talk to you soon. Bye.